Welcome back to MBE. Today is Big Block Chevy Manifold 101. I got Bob here. He's going to help with this. Bob's a, a great big reason of our success here at MBE. Bob helps with all the design work and everything that we do here. So Bob needs to be included in this because he has a lot to do with this video. So what we have here is we start off with, we're going to just go over the big cheap style manifolds with the big nine, okay? So this is how, this is how we started off 20 years ago, maybe even 22 years ago, 23 years ago, 25 years ago. It's getting old, okay? Long runners on the ends big hooks in the runners, all the stuff that air doesn't like. Um, no line of sight, we can see this. You look, see how you can't see the end of the, you can't see the flange at all? Okay, no line of sight. That means it's not gonna pull in the booster, that cylinder is always gonna be lean, the center is always gonna be rich, meaning everything is a sacrifice. Okay, then we go to the next step, okay? This is the next version, okay? We did a 20, 2801, now we did a 2802. Power-wise, there was no difference from a 2802 to a 2802. Um, reason being is it has significant design flaws in it. Runners are too high, floor is a little bit too narrow, and it doesn't have enough line of sight. So the runners are too, are, are too long also. Okay, so we have this, you can look in here, okay. Okay, you can see the plenum volume and everything in there. Okay, now we come to this, and Bob will lift that up. Okay, so after, this is the same manifold, 40 hours later. Okay, 40 hours later, we have to do all of this, and still, everything is a sacrifice in the porting. There's nothing that's not a sacrifice because we're dealing with an existing casting. Okay, now we come to something that is the MBE difference. So all of the years of, of especially um, Bob and I both working at the cup teams, working on manifold development, having them pay us to do all this development. Well, after a while you start to learn some things. And Bob, go ahead and, 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 and explain some of the things that go into the MBE billet manifold. And so as you can see the you plenum like. size in that manifold, these are specifically for 585 to 660 inch, 70, 670 inch motors, large plenum box and straight runners with proper taper rates. And if you notice, it looks similar to a sheet metal manifold. Well, ultimately a sheet metal manifold is kind of the gauge. Within a cast manifold, we spend hours and hours and hours of grinding to try and get the performance out of a cast manifold that a sheet metal manifold has. When we look at a sheet metal in the advantage and we're limited on a casting, even spending hours and hours of grinding, we can't get the performance as close to a sheet metal manifold unless we build something like a billet. And in a billet gives us the freedom to make the plenum box the size for the RPM range, the runner lengths for the RPM range, the taper rates, so big cubic inch engines can have a power curve that puts them to the finish line first. A big cubic inch engine that can make peak power at 7,800 or 8,000 RPM is a killer on the racetrack. And when Matt and I spent the time to develop this intake manifold from all of our years of grinding on these inferior manifolds, and not that they're no good, but they have a specific application, we've taken one step further and given a high RPM, high horsepower piece. In addition to that, we were able to get at least 10 to 15 pounds off a cast version in a billet manifold. And then you add to that the sex appeal, that is a sexy son of a bitch. Okay, and then you come over here, we want to see some things, okay? So we have it on the cylinder head, all right? So yeah, eye candy, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what we want to do is we want to look in the plenum. We want to look in the plenum. What I want you to notice is the end runners. Look at the line of sight to the end runner, okay? What everyone has to remember, that intake manifold just isn't a part that you put on. It is an extension of the intake port track. So this is part of your intake port. It's always thought of, oh, I don't need, I have a great set of heads on there. I'm just going to put a manifold on it. I don't, all I have to do is match port it. Well, you people are wrong, like wrong to no end. 
especially the people that are building 450 to 440 cubic inch small blocks or 632 inch big blocks, I think you need plenum volumes at a 450 inch motor. I mean, it's time to get with the program. There's a reason why you guys in Supercomp run 182 to 184 and our customers run 191 to 194. Okay, so this is just a good example. But if you look at the line of sight, what this does is we only have one carburetor. You only have four jets to choose from, okay? So everything is a sacrifice. The sacrifice is much, much better now because this is going to pull on the booster very, very close to how it's going to pull on the booster in the center runners. And even if you have fuel injection, it's still the same, okay? You're still going to have, you're, you're still going to be able to put less fuel in this because it's going to pull the charge in more evenly. And those leaner mixtures make higher horsepower. And most of our customers, and also our viewers know, putting a bigger carburetor on here gains you more power. It doesn't necessarily fix the power curve where you want it. What this manifold does is accommodates those big carburetors, but it positions the boosters properly to feed all of the cylinders in this single four barrels type manifold like a sheet metal does even with dual four barrels because you're centering the booster over the opening of all the runners and as Matt said the shortest distance and the line of sight is very important to keep the airspeed and the charge up and feeding the power curve from low RPM all the way to the red line. Okay and then of course you have the weight difference okay as you can see we build beautiful valley trait for it all of these this is all o-ring there's no silicone to use here of course you have to put silicone on your china rail you just put your fittings in here everything is fit to your deck height the weight difference you're looking at a total weight is about 12 pounds less than using the the ported version of the manifold that i showed which i promise you we probably port more than anybody we take more chips out of those cast ones and uh, we have to because we're insane 40 hours of grinding on those things is ridiculous Basically, it's a free manifold. Not anymore, but we have a piece here that's, that is, this is a race part. Look at this. It's a real race part, okay? We've moved all of our development into the 21st century. We've adopted everything that we know in our experience over the years to build a modern day racing engine out of a, what some people might call as a dinosaur. Two valve per cylinder, push rod, but we've optimized every part of this package that we can within our abilities and Matt has given us the resources here at MBE Cylinder Heads to do this kind of work where our customers can have a 21st century racing engine. Yeah, when he says resources, it's resources and people is what it comes down to and um, and, and certainly surrounding yourself, just like your parents say, you, you are what you, who you hang out with. So I'm fortunate to have people here that, um, that are smarter than me, you know. So like I said, it's just really good and it makes it a lot of fun. But, you know, we're here to kick ass, make power, period. And we want to thank our customers who have shown a commitment and been patient as we do this development work and to develop something like this and we can offer this product to anybody who's willing to step into the 21st century get over all that stuff we used to do 20 years ago we're racing in the modern day and we're out there to win races and set records thank you so much for watching big block chevy 101 or in big block chevy intake manifold 101 have a great day